So what's wrong with this code? Now, your first thought was, it's not Rust, which you would normally be correct, but not this time. It's the infinity timeout duration. Why would you ever create a timer that never executes? Wait. <laughs> And even stranger, this one executes within one second. And even stranger, this number, which is significantly smaller, executes immediately. And even stranger, this number will execute in 596 hours. Bruh. And it's only one millisecond shorter than the one that just executed immediately. What is going on? What are you doing? First off, you'll notice something's wrong right here. I got in a bar fight with Tailwind and you should see the other guy. Second, I'm somebody that when I see this, I have to know why. Why does Infinity execute immediately? Why? 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 Before we look at the Chromium code, there's something you need to understand about JavaScript. When calling a native method such as set timeout, we have to take JavaScript values and convert them into C++ values. If you ever look at the Chromium or VA code, you'll see something like JS arguments. And that is because any argument here can technically be any type. I can pass in an object instead of infinity, zero, or even the string foo. And since a language like C++ cannot work that way, you need a wrapper class. That means V8 has something that looks like this. A type discriminator in which says what type of argument it is, and a pointer to the heap where the value is stored. Now the interesting thing about the pointer is that it also has a tag itself. The first bit can be a zero or a one. If it is a zero, that means that the remaining bits are actually a small integer. If it is a one, the remaining bits are actually an address onto the heap. Apparently the heap looks like a cloud. You can read more about this in this amazing article on pointer compression, in which will be linked in the description, which is directly below the subscribe button. So press it. After a little bit of searching, I found the native method for set timeout. Now remember, when you call a function from JavaScript, you actually give it an array of boxed values. Typically, this is called a bridge method for bridging the JavaScript world to the C++ world. These arguments need to be converted into values in which C++ can deal with. And in our case, a V8 function and some integer representing how long to sleep. So this is not the droid we're looking for. This is the droid we're looking for. This is the bridge method that takes the JavaScript values and converts them into C++ values. At the bottom of this function, you will see that it does call that set timeout function that we were just at. And here's the value we are looking for that is converted. Right here, of course, it does the conversion, converts the argument into an IDL long. What the hell is that? With a little bit more searching, we will find that an IDL long is actually a 32-bit int. Now, personally, I thought L long stood for long long, but actually IDL is the prefix, and there is a long long, which actually looks like a long long long. It's pretty long. With a little bit more searching, we found the method that takes in the JavaScript value and converts it into a C++ native value. The first thing it has to do is check, is this thing a int 32? Which first checks to see, is this thing a SME? Meaning that the value pointer is actually a small integer. Else, is the thing a number? Remember, JavaScript, you can pass in any type. And checks to see, is the double a 32-bit number? Or in other words, is it between a min and max int, not minus zero, Minus zero, you say? Well, of course, it is the IEEE 754-1985 specification for floating point numbers, which means that you can have positive and negative infinity, and of course, negative zero, which stringifies to zero. What? All right, back to the code. If we can do a double to integer conversion and integer back to double conversion, it stills the value that we passed in. That means it is a 32-bit signed integer double value which means we can do the fast return of a simple value to a 32-bit number. Now, none of this explains why infinity is zero, so therefore we need to go to the slow case. The slow case is a bit more involved, but a little bit further down, you'll see this right away. Standard is infinity, number value, return zero. So there we go, we found out why that happens, but that doesn't explain all those other weird numbers that I showed you. So first, the number 4,294,968,296 milliseconds is actually represented in binary in the following way. The first 32 bits look like this, 00010111111, and then 20 22 more zeros. And then there's a singular bit on the other side. This, of course, represents the 4 billion, and this represents the additional 1,000. Now, when we convert this number to a 32-bit number, that means this one right here is going to get cut off, where the remaining ones that we have will remain within the number. So therefore, we will sleep for 1,000 milliseconds. Kind of funny when you think about it. It's just chopped it right off. 
But what about that 2 billion instant executing one? Well, this one can be represented in binary in the following way. There's a one right here and then 31 zeros. Now, what this means in a signed world is a largely negative number. In fact, it's the maximum negative number. You can actually convert any number in JavaScript to a signed 32-bit number by doing a binary operation. And here you can see it becomes negative which means this thing needs to happen into the past. Therefore, the timer needs to execute immediately. But why does this number take 596 hours? Well, its binary representation is a single zero and then 31 ones. If this isn't obvious why that is, just think about taking the number 10,000 and minusing one from it. You're gonna get nine, 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 nine. So if you take a power of two, say 16, write it out in binary and then subtract one from it, what you're going to get is 15, or all ones. So that means when you take this number, which is normally a large negative number, and simply subtract one from it, you'll get a large positive number, which is the maximum amount of sleep time, which means your timer will never fire. So that means the next time you have a PR you need to make with a set timeout zero, go ahead. Use a beautifully negative number and confuse your whole team and then explain to them why you understand two's complement. Instant promotion. Now remember, everything I did is open source. If you ever have a question about how something works, you can look through the source code. I also hear subscribing to this channel helps and pressing the like button. The name is the Swoliagen. I'd like to give a big shout out to Alexi who helped me play around with the Chromium source code. Give him a follow on Twitter. He's one of the best engineers I've ever worked with.